Today on the Beam Channel, I want to talk about one of the fundamental elements of Erlang and Elixir Systems, the Gen Server. Gen servers are one of the fundamental building blocks of OTP, and they should be used, and they are generally used for things where you need a something that will A, hold state, and B, respond to requests. So messages should come in, and potentially you send a reply back. If, you, if, if something looks like that, look at a gen server. You might also want to look at a, a state machine, but that's a separate, that'll be a future video. Gen servers are defined with a number of callbacks. And you can find the, the complete list in the Erlang and Elixir docs, but there are sort of a couple of them you should know about. So first of all, there's the init callback. This is generally run synchronously, not asynchronously. So the uh, thing that the super, when a supervisor creates gen server, it'll run the init before it starts the next one. That's useful to know. And it should normally return OK in a state. There are actually some other things you can do. You can also return stop if you need to. And there's some other things that, that you can do, like continue to let it continue to do processing while other things happen. So after a knit, you have three things that will take in messages. And these are handle call, handle cast, and handle info. And I'll go through them. A call is something that you should expect to reply to. So for example, if your gen server is representing a counter, you might say, you know, get me the current number, and it'll return that number. A cast is something that doesn't expect to reply. Uh, so it could be like increment the counter, but you know, I don't care what the number is, just increment it and move on. No reply expected. And then info is any other message that's not coming through the gen server protocols, but it's just a regular old Erlang message. Now the things you gotta realize about this is this system has been in use for 20 years. It's been very heavily debugged. All of the corner cases, or almost all of them at least, have been ironed out over that time. So a lot of the things that you would never think of when you're building this are gonna be resolved for you. You just have to handle the specifics things that apply to your application. There's also, by the way, a terminate callback and a code change callback and some other things that are very useful. You should look at the documentation for all that. The other cool thing about it is gen servers are, since they are the standard, there are useful functions and methods both in Observer as well as in libraries where you can actually inspect what's going on inside your gen server without having to write any API, any things like that. So if you just need to, for some reason, get the internal state of a gen server, maybe for assert, making some assertions during a, a test, for example, you don't have to like add an API for that. It's already provided for you. You just use us, the sys module. And Recon has some nice wrappers around that as well, which is really nice so that you can actually get things out. So let me walk you through the handle, handle call, which is the, the function you'll probably spend most time in your handle cast, takes three parameters. The request, and usually you'd use an add up a tuple or a map or something with an atom to tell you what the message is and then some data. The from, which ignore for right now, and the state. You would then take that in, do something with it, increment a counter. The, sorry, return the atom reply, your reply, which goes back to the, th to the whatever called you. And then the new state, which then replaces the old state. Now normally, when you're doing this, you call the function gen server call or gen server cast to actually make that call into the gen server. And the normal way you do that actually would be you'd have in the same module an API that actually wraps that, which is nice because if you change it from a gen server to a state machine later or something, you can just change that function. And nobody outside ever has to notice. That also handle call has a built-in default timeout of five seconds. So you can, or not the handle call, sorry, the call itself function gen server call has a default timeout. So if your gen server dies or something, it'll automatically time out, which is really rather nice. So again, everything here has been worked out for you. You just have to implement your application specific things. It's very simple. And there's a lot more stuff you can go on here. That'll be subject to future videos. Gen servers are one of those places you're gonna spend a lot of time if you're doing Erlang and Elixir. So if you'd like help with gen servers and other things Erlang and Elixir related, please give me a call. You can find my contact info down below. I've got a Calendly link if you'd like to set up a time to talk to me. I do training courses and I'll be happy to come to your company, pretty much anywhere in the world, to help you get up to speed in Erlang or Elixir.